Hallelujah. Come on, make some noise in this house this morning. If you know that God has been good to you, if you know what God is about to do, if you know that it is God who have you standing still, make some noise and say that God is good. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. Father, we give you glory. Father, we magnify your name. Father, Lord God, we declare that there is no other God like you this morning, God. You are the God of everything. You are the God of heaven and you are the God of earth. Father, we call on your name this morning because at the sound of that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We call on your Lordship this morning, dear God, declaring that you are sovereign, declaring that you are the only way, declaring that you are the way maker, you are the promise keeper, you are the light in the darkness, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah, you are the conquering lion, you are Jehovah, you are Nisi, you are El El you are uh, Adonai, you are, oh God, everything we need, you have already provided, you are Jehovah Sabaoth, the God that summons war, the God that has heaven's army at his right and at his left, you are the God of angels, you are the God of men, you are the God of the risen Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ. You are the God of living things. And you are the God of dead things. You are the God of blessings. And you are the God of curses. You are the God of life. And you are the God of death. What shall we do this morning, God? Where shall we go this morning, God? Where shall we run from you? Where shall we hide from you? Nowhere there, God. What can separate us from your love this morning, God? Nothing. No height. No depth. No valley. No mountain. No situation. Because you are God. And for this God, your name is to be praised in all the earth. So God, Lord, we understand who you are this morning, God. And we surrender in your presence. We surrender to your rule and we surrender to your reign. And we say, God, have your way this morning there, God. Because everything you do in our lives, God, is intentional. I know, God, as you're about to take us down this journey this morning, God, we pray that hearts will become receptive, God, and they will learn more of your love towards them. I know, God, they will be transformed to look and be more like you, God. Help us today, Father. Father, we ask all these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I didn't come here to entertain anybody this morning. So if you don't get your praise on, I can't help you this morning. We must know how to go into the inner courts, past the gates of praise, and get behind the veil. And stop substituting songs for worship. Stop substituting our worship to God with just noise. And start giving God our hearts in worship. Start giving God our hearts in worship. And not our tongue. And not our mind. But our hearts. Because this is what he has ordained for us to give him. Our hearts. 
So God, we surrender our hearts this morning to you, God. And we run after you, God, for more of you. For your word says, oh God, you are seeking worshipers who will worship you in spirit and in truth. This morning, I take the word from 2 Kings, reading from chapter 7, from verse 1 to 2, and then I go to verse 18 to 20. Verse 1 says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Verse 18 says, And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and the measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be, and he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. God bless the reading of this word. You may be seated this morning. This morning, God has caused me to write this sermon. It is entitled, Windows. In heaven. And while writing this, I came to understand that there are a lot of people who are in the right place, but will never eat the things God has prepared for them. There are a lot of people who are in the right place. They have been positioned in a good home, a good house, a good marriage, a good church, but they'll never get the blessings that belong to them because they don't believe that God will open windows in heaven for them. Today, we are going to spend some time talking about God creating windows or portals for the church, the kingdom of God in heaven and on earth. As I go into the scripture and as I go into the word, I must say happy Father's Day to all the lovely fathers that are in this house this morning. A special, warm, hearty welcome to all the arm of men who we strongly rely on this morning. You are our Lord as well in our homes and we thank you for being by our side. This morning, we talk about windows or portals that are in heaven. As we look to this passage, we can see that there is a situation burning in the town of Samaria where farming is a problem and the people are on the verge of dying while there is a war coming their way. If you would read this account... I did not read the entire account for you. What is happening at this point in time in this city is that they are under farming and they are under war. The Israelites have their enemies coming at them at one point and uh, they are starving at the next point. So they are facing war on every side. But as they are facing tragedy, God sends a word. The enemies of the people of God 
had gathered themselves to come against them at the right time to attack because they were low in food, they were low in their physical strength, when they had the lowest of everything physically, it was the right time for the enemy to attack. So their enemy had plotted to come at them at this time because they knew they were in famine. Now the enemy knows when you are at your lowest. The enemy knows when you are lacking substance. The enemy knows when you are going downhill. And it is the right time for him to attack. The enemy doesn't have mercy because you are weak. The enemy will not have mercy because you are starving. He sees victory. They were down and out. And the word of God said they were facing starvation. They were at the best time to be destroyed. However, the Bible tells us that there is a prophet in the land called Elisha. And he has prophesied to this nation that their Lord and their King, that God would open up windows in heaven for them. And by this time tomorrow, the same thing that they don't see now would be selling for a shekel at the gate. Now, this is rather impossible to believe when you know there is nobody coming to give you a handout. You are under siege. You are under war. And nobody is going to visit you. You are not expecting your neighbor because your neighbor is also starving. You are not expecting your family because your family is also starving. Their plot to receive from God, as the Elijah said, seemed in a distant, faraway prophecy for one man because it was rather impossible. So he found it rather funny. And I also want to point out to you this was not any kind of man. It was the man that had a strong word. He was the man that the king leaned on. He was the right hand. He was the ambassador. He was the man that trusted or the king entrusted his words to. He knew the king's secrets. And he said, Elisha, I hear you talk about God blessing us. I hear you talk about God creating windows and portals for us. But he said this is an impossible task. You're a funny man, Elijah. He said, I got to live to see this because this don't sound real. And immediately he received the curse. Elijah said to him, you will see it, but you will never eat it. I came to talk to those of us who will live to see the blessing, but will never have the blessing. God sent me with the second version, part two of last week. He said, there are some of you who are going to see the blessing. You are going to smell the blessing. You are going to watch the blessing. But you're never going to have the blessing. He said, tell them. If they don't believe. That I can open windows in heaven. They are never going to partake. Of my blessings. It takes more than seeing. It takes more than hearing. It takes more than touching. It takes more than just prophesying. It takes you commanding the blessing into its right situation. It takes you speaking it. It takes you believing it. You see, there are a lot of us who have been blessed by
but we are only speaking negative. The doctor say, you'll never have it. The doctor already tell you what you're going to have. God said you will only see it. You'll never have it. So this morning I didn't come to focus on that bunch of people. I came to focus on the people who are going to believe it. I came to focus on the people who are going to believe that God is able to open windows, to open portals when there is no way, when everything seems like it has been locked up, shut up like Jericho, but they made up their mind that they're going to march around Jericho. Jericho, uh, till the walls uh, come uh, down, uh, till the doors break open, till the bombs uh, overflow, till the windows lose their shutters, till the curtains rip into, uh, I won't stop till it all comes down. I came to talk to you. Because I've come to realize that this Lord is a fraction of the church that only live to see blessings, but they have nothing to show for it. They are trampled and they die in the blessing. Oh, she can show you on the robosa. I speak to you this morning, believers. If you don't believe it, you will never eat it. You will see it, but you will never have it. Hmm. So the prophet gave him a curse. From God instead because you're already down and out. You don't have a next escape plan. You have nowhere else to turn. You have nothing coming through this door. Nothing coming through that door. Nothing coming through that door. Nothing coming through that door. And you got a word. You see, there are believers who are getting the word at the altar, getting the word in church, and they have nothing coming through this door, nothing coming through that door, nothing coming through that door, and they get the word and they still change not. So you'll be trampled and, and you will die. How could you be crying to God to save you? And God sends a word in your famine. And you laugh at God. Ha. Would God open windows? You see, everybody have a way of always looking down. Always looking to their hand where their hand could reach. Always looking at the people right around their circle. But nobody's looking up. You see, what this man needed to do was look up and stop looking to the people who could have touched him and start looking up for where there were windows in heaven. So the end result, the word of God said he died. Just as it was said to him, so he saw it, but he never ate it. How many of us today are not eating what God has for us because we don't believe it? How many of us are living to see it but not living to eat it? How many of us are living to hear about windows but never see windows manifest in our lives? 
You hear it. You hear testimonies. You say, wow, God could do it for her. Wow, God did it for her. Wow, God did it for him. I hear about it. She's been to cancer and back. Oh my God, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. But God, when are you going to do it for me? Because I lack faith for it to happen for me. This was this young man's predicament. So for a short time, I want to talk to you what is a window. For the person who are in technology, like my husband, window is more than what carpenters would make. It is what is used to um, navigate our living today in the technology world. A window is a separate viewing area on a computer display screen in the system that allows multiple viewing areas as part of its graphical user interface. Windows are managed by a Windows manager as part of its windowing system. So when these guys who created Windows and Microsoft they understood what they were doing, why they called it window. Because the window program must have a manager for it. And it allows more than one area to be viewed at the same time. Like God can see all of us at the same time. And pour out a blessing upon all of us at the same time. A window can usually be received by the user. For example, it could be stretched to any side. It could be minimized, maximized, or closed. It means that you, the user, could close windows, open windows, maximize windows, and minimize windows. It means that what you do on the earthly realm doesn't affect the spiritual realm. It only affects you. The windowing system is not affected when you touch your screen at home. It is still the windowing system that is being used all over the world. But what you do in your home what you do in your church, what you do in your life, cause you to miss out on windows. You can have more than one windows open at the same time. I see my husband do it all the time. But the problem is with the church, we are minimizing windows, we are closing windows, and then we are like Jonah, why God? So you are saying, where is my God? Where is Jehovah? Where is Jehovah Nissi? Where is the God of my employment? Where is the God of my finance? Where is the God of my health? But he said, I've given you the use of the power, the keys of the kingdom, that whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Open the windows on earth and a floodgate is going to come true. Close the windows on earth and you shut up everything from the heavenly realm. Oh, you ain't getting up this morning. Because some of us are like the Lord who love to minimize the window. Every time God is about to talk, you close the window. Every time God is about to give instructions, you minimize it. Every time God says change, you close it. Every time God says so, you say not today God, you switch that window. Every time God says pray, not now God, you close that window. So you have lost the access of eating the blessing and all you do is see it.
Hallelujah. So you, the user, is in control of the window. Because God portals, as you see, I have some pit tears. God portals doesn't stop flowing. Malachi says, bring in all that you have into the house of God. You see, that's a problem. You ain't bringing nothing because you're only minimizing the window. You're only closing the window. I can't give nothing, minimize. I can't give nothing, close. Ah, but God, window ain't closing. You shut them up. Oh gosh, go with me, go with me. Somebody find that scripture for me. Malachi chapter 3. Bring the full tide into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Isn't it amazing that what these soldiers lack was food? You ain't get it yet. Isn't it amazing what they were lacking, the Israelites were lacking was food. Had the believers done what they had to do, they would have never been in farming. He said that my house may have food and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing and there there is no room or no need. So you, the user, have a lot of power on earth. God said, I've already opened windows for you. But you, the users, have been shutting me out. You're like the Lord who is saying, could God really do that? Is God really the God of the impossible? I don't think so. Let me go to a next window. Let me try my mother. Let me try my father. Let me check a next window. Maybe my friend will tell me better. Let me check a next window. Maybe the opium man will tell me better. Let me check a next window. Maybe a loan from the bank will tell me better. But God, your window seems frustrating. It seems weighty. It seems like a task. So I'm going to look for an easier window, God. And so we minimize God. We close him off to move on. According to technology, windows can be multitasking operating system. You can have a number of windows on your same screen at the same time. Interacting with each one whenever you choose. So you can have the windows for healing, blessings, health, word, forgiveness. The problem is the church is not accessing windows. We are going around with these idle prayers. This program comes to you compliments of the Tobago Inspirational Network. To support this and other programs, we encourage you to give to TIN. Contributions can be made at any First Citizens Bank at account number 203-4679. We thank you for your support.